This week I'm caking Reese peanut butter cupcakes. Cakes. Of course, this is how to cake it. But two of them. Two of them. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Good. Good. <laughs> I'm being extra bratty today and I like it. <laughs> now you might notice that I baked these cakes in fluted tart pans because they resemble Reese peanut butter cups. So the first thing I did is I used Bernadette, reliable Bernadette, to help me warm up the sides of my tart pan and get my cakes out. This new cake batter has peanut butter in the batter, it has peanut butter chips, and I have to say, I was shocked at how peanut buttery it was when I ate it. Like I baked a whole new cake for this cake. Groundbreaking how to keep it up. Yeah, I mean. can you have some big like, can you have like ground and then like break it? And ground, then I'll be there. I don't know, put it somewhere here on the ground. Now that I've removed both my peanut butter cakes, it's time to level them and cut the caramelization off the bottom. There is caramelization on the sides, but I'm gonna leave it. I think the color looks nice, and also I can imagine cutting along all those ridges. I don't want to. I just don't want to do that. Now I'm gonna cut my cakes into two layers. It's time to simple syrup all four of my layers. Sir Squeeze was surprised. He was like, I've never syruped peanut butter cakes. I'm trying to keep him on his nozzle. While the simple syrup is soaking in, I am gonna make a peanut butter filling. For this, we need smooth peanut butter, icing sugar, and butter. Ah, you can't go wrong. All you have to do is basically mix these things together in a stand mixer. So I began by mixing my peanut butter and my butter together. And once that was incorporated, I started to add in the icing sugar until it was fully incorporated. Now I've made peanut butter frosting on the channel before in my chocolate peanut butter cake. Every time I think about that cake, my mouth waters. <laughs> There's a really awkward moment in that video where I like, I'm eating it and I'm looking at it. I just, it's, it's hilarious. Don't look at it yourself, <laughs> but if you could just maybe not look right at the camera, that would be awesome. It's time to fill and stack my cakes upside down. So put the bigger layer on the bottom upside down. And I'm going to put a very generous layer of peanut butter filling in this cake. Like it's probably triple what I normally put. And I spread this very carefully to the edges of both cakes and top it with the second cake. Now that my cakes are filled, I want to chill them. I want to give this filling time to set up before I crumb coat these cakes. How many of you are drooling right now? How many? Put like the drool emoji below if you're drooling. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. What's the matter with... I'm sorry. Okay, this I interpret that as drooling. Like you're smiling but your tongue's out. No. I think that's drooling. It's time to crumb coat and chill these cakes. I am using ganache because there's no buttercream in a Reese peanut butter cup. Is there? The inside's all peanut butter and the outside is all chocolate. I thought I was gonna like ice into the ridges. I don't know why I thought that. I just pretty much iced <laughs> the whole thing and uh, it still has the shape. I'll worry about indenting the ridges later when I cover the cake. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I feel like the need to really say that, chilled. I don't just cool my cakes to room temperature. I put them in the fridge and chill them after because it makes them so much easier to cut and carve. But we, it's just not in the video because you wouldn't want to watch, you know, like, hours of my cake just sitting in the fridge. Before I flip the cakes, I wanna make sure that I do this onto a silicone mat, because I don't want the cakes to stick. Quickly ice the bottom of each one of your cakes with ganache as well. I feel like the ultimate flip was the flip I needed to do with Julia and JP yeah. of Healthy Junk Food. Like, this was the cake that I was like, I need to flip it, but I can't. I could not flip it. So it took three sets of hands. One. Two, three. Oh! Yay! <laughs> it's time to cover these cakes, and for this, I could use chocolate fondant, but I actually decided to make it even chocolatier by using a 50 50 mixture of chocolate fondant and dark chocolate modeling chocolate. It was so chocolatey. The difference between modeling chocolate and fondant is 
Modeling chocolate has no sugar added, so it's far less sweet and way more chocolatey. If you over knead it, it becomes way too soft. So that's why I'm mixing it with fondant. So you roll it out in the same way, just roll it out like fondant, a little bit bigger than your cake, and then carefully pick it up and drape it over the cake and use a fondant smoother to smooth it. And be careful of how you touch it because it's really easy to leave your fingerprints on modeling chocolate. You don't wanna leave any evidence. Now it's time to create or bring back the ridges on this peanut butter cup. So I ended up using a ruler, but not the how to cake it ruler, a ruler I've had forever and it's like a triangle ruler. I feel like I've really just reached peak. We're gonna trim away the excess at the bottom, but we're not gonna do it flush to the cake. You wanna leave a little bit extra on the outside, like about half an inch. Because of the nature of the modeling chocolate and fondant mixture, you have to be very careful about how you're rolling it out and touching it. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. I hope you like it here. We like it here. There's a lot more chocolate bars I could cake. What chocolate bar do you wanna see me cake next? So we're gonna roll out our modeling chocolate fondant mixture a little bit bigger than the surface of our cake. Here's where it gets tricky, because this cake is actually really simple. I think this is a great beginner cake. However, because of the nature of the modeling chocolate and fondant mixture, you have to be very careful about how you're rolling it out and touching it. You and I have very different definitions of beginner. For a fondant cake, this is pretty beginner. Okay, okay. But it's difficult because you can't hide any imperfections. It's a good, difficult beginner cake. You'll also want to brush water on the excess fondant that's sticking up from the sides. And this is so the fondant can stick to each other. And then we're gonna very carefully pick it up and place it on top. And we're gonna use our smoother again, but very carefully, because even a smoother Sometimes you can indent lines into the fondant. We don't want to see any lines. Now you want to press the fondant together. So the fondant from underneath and the top, you want to press these together and make sure they're stuck together. And now I'm going to use a cookie cutter. I just have like a flower shaped cookie cutter where the petal is a little bit of a V. Because if you look at a Reese peanut butter cup from the top, you just see like a zigzag line. So I'm going to mark that zigzag line with one petal of my flower cutter and then I'm gonna cut that pattern with scissors. My hand hurt after that. Once you cut your zigzag formation, you can just sort of smooth and perfect it with your fingertips or a sculpting tool, and then do this again on the second kick. Oh yeah, everything I'm doing, I'm doing twice. Two kicks. I'm sorry there was no Italian meringue buttercream in this episode, but don't worry. There'll be plenty next week. I know Italian meringue buttercream can be very tricky to make and I know some of you are struggling with it. So I've decided to host a live baking tutorial where we will make Italian meringue buttercream and I'll walk you through it step by step. So you'll be joining me from your own kitchen, wherever that is in the world. Join me on Wednesday, March 25th at 6 p.m. We have limited spots, so click the link below to get all the details. Registration closes on March 18th, so sign up now. Now, I wanted the final cake to look like an ad for a Reese peanut butter cup, so I'm gonna leave one of them whole, but I'm gonna cut a bite out of the other one. Even though there's a bite out, it's time to cut this cake. This is a cake. After it was all covered up, it smelled like chocolate in here. But then when I cut it, it was like peanut butter, like just released into the air. I highly suggest you try making this cake yourself, even if you don't make it look like a Reese peanut butter cup. You've got to try it. There's a link below. And if you want more cake, click here and here. See you next week.
when there will be buttercream. I'll give you a clue. It is a cake inspired by a drink. Okay, okay, I'll just tell you. Next week, I'm making a